Let's say you're the principal of a school. It's a big school. Maybe it's a little school. It could be a medium-sized, gothic-looking school. Who knows? It's a school with kids in it. Lots of kids. It's an awesome job, isn't it? Being a principal is also a very complicated, demanding responsibility. You can't walk down the hallway of a school without being bombarded with questions, requests, complaints, and you're not busy, are you? Got a minute? Oh yeah, I got a minute. One minute, that's it, that's all. Public scrutiny, new accountability systems, school shootings, budgets, personnel, facilities, reports, emails, meetings, you get the picture. Sometimes, it feels like we're in the crosshairs. With all those competing pressures, if we principals want to be truly effective in our work, where should we put our focus? As my good friend and colleague Andre Wicks has told me, you can attend to many things, but you can only focus on one at a time. So what's the one gotta be? It's a school, folks, so our focus should be squarely directed on the strategies that lead to increased student achievement. What are the most important activities that occur at school on a daily basis? Teaching and learning. So it stands to reason that we should engage in leadership behaviors that support rigorous instruction and result in robust learning for all students. The most effective place to impact teaching and learning? In the classroom. Right there in the trenches. This is where the magic happens. Now you may work in a school that is very high functioning, one that operates as a professional learning community with top-notch educators collaborating frequently about students, curriculum, assessments, instructional techniques, and integrated activities. When they leave their collaborative meetings with their teamwork built lesson plans, the reality sets in. They're headed back to their own classrooms, most likely to teach their lessons independently. Who's going to be there to provide them with descriptive, timely feedback? Who's going to offer thought-provoking, reflective questions? You are, if you engage in meaningful walkthroughs. Our method of walkthroughs is built upon a simple idea. We can increase our teachers' self-reflective abilities, and by extension their instructional effectiveness, by providing regular, differentiated, descriptive feedback right there in the classroom. And teacher effectiveness is the number one determinant of student success. So this leadership action will lead to increased student achievement. An effective walkthrough process is performed intentionally by following these five simple steps. Step one, set the stage. Communicate early and often the intent, the process, and the goals of conducting frequent walkthroughs with your staff. Tend to the relationships you have with the teachers in your building. Establish a climate of trust and a mindset of continuous growth. Those ideas will help ensure a culture accepting of this process. Step two, identify look-fors. Sit down with each of your teachers individually. In partnership, select a couple of instructional strategies that you'd like to focus on. It could be broad, like implementing differentiated instruction strategies, or it could be very focused, like ensuring that the teacher elicits input from every single child during each lesson. These become your look-fors. They'll be what you're looking for, and the teacher knows it in advance. Set goals for implementation together so the target is clear. Step three, get into the classrooms. Early on, teachers and students will probably make a fuss about your presence in the room. Remind them to keep working and learning as hard as they can. Stay for anywhere between five and 15 minutes. Practice what I've come to call unobtrusivity. No, it's not a real word, but it's a real thing. It's the art of being in a classroom without anyone seeming to notice that you're there. That's how you can observe the children and the adults in the wild, gathering authentic data so you can provide accurate feedback. Step four, provide feedback. Studies show that teachers desperately crave feedback that can inform and improve their practice, and we can provide it in a timely, individualized manner. Some teachers prefer a handwritten note, others an email. In some districts, an electronic medium is common, Others prefer to use an interactive journal. Whenever possible, a face-to-face -face discussion is highly preferred. Whatever the format, the key is this. We provide direct, differentiated feedback that includes observations, suggestions, and, most importantly, reflective questions. You can get more information about the intricacies of reflective questioning in another presentation. Step five, lather, rinse, and repeat as often as possible. Many school leaders ask, where do you find the time for that? Quite honestly, if we spend our time in meetings, emailing, and completing reports, there isn't any time left over for walkthroughs, so we must make it a priority. Let's consult with Stephen Covey's time management matrix, a 
very useful tool from his 1989 book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The matrix shows the relationship between activities that are urgent or not urgent and important or not important. In this case, importance is defined as leading towards our goal of increasing student achievement. The time management matrix will help us prioritize our activities and make decisions about how we spend our most precious resource, time. Let's talk about the leadership action that match quadrant two. High importance, since they relate directly to increased student achievement, yet they're not urgent. There's no one in your face, banging on your door, ringing your phone, or blowing up your email, forcing you to engage in these strategies. You can do them tomorrow. But what do they say about tomorrow? There is no tomorrow. The walkthrough is the poster child for quadrant two. Rather than wait for time to magically appear for you to conduct walkthroughs, make it happen. Put them on your calendar. On your way from meeting A to meeting B, stop in a classroom for five to six minutes and share some reflective questions with a teacher. Log the frequency or amount of your walkthroughs and engage in a friendly competition with a neighboring principal. Ask your teachers to demand your presence in their rooms. Whatever you can do to keep yourself motivated, do it. Do it now. There is no tomorrow, not for a superhero. Check out the book, Building Teachers' Capacity for Success. Avail available at the ASCD and Education Hall websites. Also look for additional videos that really get after the particulars of reflective feedback and other leadership topics. Thanks for watching.